So I've just come down to the bottom of the garden to uh, have a look at the bees on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Um, we've got uh, wonderful weather for, I don't know, for the next few days, but we're, it's gonna, this high pressure we've got is gonna come and move to Europe, which it has done, and now we're gonna be funneling down a cold northerly, northerly airstream, which is interesting because a lot of people have been um, jumping up and down, going, my bees are doing this, my bees are doing that, and I'm now saying, well, look what's coming. It's gonna get considerably colder. And this is completely normal for Europe and uh, for spring. And we've only had temperatures between maybe 13 and 15, 18 degrees tops in sort of localized areas. So the bees have all been flying. They've been bringing in loads of pollen. They've been bringing in some nectar too, which is brilliant. Um, so uh, we've, we've really been uh, spoilt for a, a few days, but only about four days. And that's the thing. But it's given the bees that time. It's given the bees to really start pushing and clearing, you know. So um, while I'm having my digestive biscuits and my coffee, it's uh, it's just awesome to um, sit and enjoy this weather, which is just unreal. You know, I've got so much done here. I've been cutting my hedges, as you know, in my previous video. I've been doing all the early strimming. That's um, what you might call whippersnippering or um, de Brussels, they call it in French, but basically it's, it's giving all the weeds that first cut, which controls them, which gets them down. So I'm not going to be so busy in um, March, in the end of March and April and May, when it all goes absolutely mental. What's going to happen in the next few days is we will get this colder period, but the bees will be brooding. And because this weather we've had has set them off, um, they'll all be now in colonies with, with, big, with big amounts of brood, and that'll be hatching out in about a week after that. So that's that critical time. That's the time when you know you've got to watch those feed levels. For prov prov providing we get some decent uh, decent weather and providing we get um, some temperatures to, 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 be, to be able to bring nectar in, the bees won't have a problem. What you can see, and I've seen it once or twice before, is if it gets really cold and you've got huge brood just hatched in your nukes, they can crash and you must watch those nukes, you know? So important. Can you just hear the, um, well, you can't hear anything apart from the birds singing. This period of uh, confinement, <coughs> excuse me, that we're all, that's not a cough, <laughs> it's my biscuit. <laughs> this period of confinement that we're all, doing all over the world now is uh, I think is giving people time to think about other things and think about the way we do things normally and I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of it but I think we've all we're all kind of got over that initial oh this is an erosion of my freedom but it's necessary we've got to where we are in this world by relying on everything so much that I think we've got to become more sustainable still. We're no way geared up for this. It's, this was just sitting there waiting to pounce. And you can put all your conspiracy theories away. You, no matter what you think, whether you think there's something in it or not, that's up to you. But at the end of the day, we've got to treat the here and now and we need to stay at home and do what we can do to help other peoples and stop them getting infected because it's the vulnerable people that are really, really, really can suffer in this. And you, can, you only got to look, it's only just the tip of the iceberg as far as I'm concerned. We are going to be in quarantine here for at least another four to maybe six weeks before there's any chance of them lifting the regulations, which I think is a good thing. So as far as the bees are concerned, we're going to just have to do what we can do. Now, the law in France at the moment states we can go off and look after our bees because they're livestock. But we have to fill in a form every day, which I think is good because it makes the point we have to understand the reasons why we're going out and not going out just for a, just for a drive around. I know it's hard, but I think the French stance is, is absolutely correct and I'm sure it will save a lot of lives. But what we can do is we can look after our colonies. And I've, I'm, I've had a couple of emails from people saying, I don't know what to do because I need to uh, see my bees. I need to put a super on. I'm a bit worried and I'm thinking, well, this is exactly, think, think what the bees would do. If they're ready for a super, by all means, go and put that super on. But what I suggest you do, if you're worried about the bees swarming, 
it's no different to any other year. That's what always happens. If you don't super correctly, you don't put things into place to reduce that swarming impulse, they're going to swarm. But the whole root of these emails is like, what can I do because I can't get to my colonies? I don't think I'll be getting them to three to four weeks, maybe longer. Well, in fairness, I think you probably will be able to get to them. And uh, I've thought about this a lot, but the, the, one of the things you can do is if you have a super, okay, and you want to put that super on top of your already strong colony, if your colony is only on eight to nine frames, but you're not sure when you're going to get to your hives next, what you can do is take a sheet of polythene or a mat or a piece of rubber or something and put it over, say, maybe eight tenths of the top of that colony. So just cover it over and leave a gap by about that much. The same gap you would have if you've got your feeder on, okay? That, that gap that lets your bees up into your feeder, the same as that. So you're giving that bees space at the edge of the, edge of the broodness. So if they want to go up, they can. But what it does, it helps trap the heat in. So what you're allowing the bees to do is when they're ready, when they're strong enough, they can go up around, around the edge of that box and then into the super. So what you're doing is you are giving them space, but you're, you're actually almost helping to keep the heat in a bit above the broodness where they need it. And that's one of the problems with, with, with looking after bees. It's just knowing how much space to give them and when. And this time of year, together with coronavirus, a lot of people who aren't able to go and see their bees because they're either home confined, they're not professionals, they might have four or six hives, something like that. I think technically you are allowed to go and see them, but I know there's other complications because they might have hives on, excuse me, on people's land, stuff like that. It does create problems. But what I'd advise you to do is just think ahead. But if you don't super your bees, it's pretty likely your bees will be hanging from the trees and they'll be lost, you know? It's much better to try and to have to get rid of some crystallized honey than it is to try and find a new queen or rectify a queen that, you know, the rectify a colony, sorry, that has swarmed. I've been using my time wise, as I said before, and I've also been thinking about uh, the content for this year's videos. Um, I was chatting to a really good friend of mine in the UK yesterday, uh, Colin, and he suggested I do a video for the small time beekeeper who's got maybe four, maybe six, maybe eight hives. And he asked if I could do a video on a mini cell builder. So um, I think that's a great idea. I think it's absolutely fantastic because in reality, most people haven't got um, brood factories I can go and harvest 10 frames of brood from. They might have, with a neighbour, they might have, for instance, uh, sorry, a neighbouring beekeeper, they might have the, the possibility of burrowing or, or, or getting hold of another three or four frames of brood. And combined with their spare three or four frames of brood, they could make a cell builder with half the amount, which is absolutely fine if you want to make half the amount of queens. So I think that's a great project. So I'm going to think about a video uh, and and do a video on that in the spring on how to raise a mi how to make a mini cell builder that will give you maybe 10 15 queens with a smaller amount of bees it's only a reduction of what i'm doing already but i'm going to go through the process and i want to show you how you can do it because i know it's going to be feasible um and i want to be able i want to i just want to get people cell building i want them to realize that making queens is easy and well as i said in my video the cell builder explained it's not difficult to make queens. The most difficult thing is probably getting them mated and getting them mated well. But if you can deal with making good queens that are full of raw, that the cells are full of royal jelly, they're hatched, they're, they fly off and mate. If you can deal with that initial part of getting those cells full of jelly and making that builder super strong, no matter how you do it, that's the key to it to me. That's what makes me happy that people are learning how to make good queens because. I still don't think that when bees do it, they necessarily make the strongest queens they could do. And when we do it, we do it in a way where we give them a max nutrition, but I want to put that into a, um, another builder that is smaller so that people who don't have as many colonies can, can still make queens. Because I still say to this day, and I believe in what I say, I'm passionate about this, I don't think people should bother raising queens unless they've got at least two or three years experience. And I really believe that unless they've got maybe six or eight uh, hives themselves or the ability to share hives with other people, 
I just don't think it's worth doing it. I, you're better off going to get queens than someone else who can make cells that are really good. Because otherwise, you'll use the, people end up using too many resources and getting disappointed with their results. Because you've got to have resources to throw at it to make decent queens. But that's my plan. I'd like to do that. And if you've got any sensible ideas about other projects I can do and look at and film and uh, discuss with you guys, I'd be delighted to do that because I'm, I'm never short of things to talk about. I tend to be a bit spontaneous. In other words, an idea comes into my head and I just go and film it. And I really like that because I, I, when I do that, I'm really passionate about something. But I can't be passionate about projects I have no interest in. But I, there's a few I've really got in here that are going on that I want to uh, share with you. And I want to help other people enhance their beekeeping because that's what it's all about. It's about sharing and uh, just having fun. It's got to be fun. If it's not fun, we shouldn't be doing it. You know, even if you're commercial, it still should be a bit of fun. It still should be something you enjoy because, you know, you can't be passionate and put everything into it unless you enjoy it. You know, I've said in one of my blogs I've done, um, in, I, I, I have a link where um, I, I show this video where Steve Jobs from Apple is talking about how you, you have to be passionate about what you want to do because if you don't, you, you would never get anywhere. It's like everyone who runs a business, I always say this to other people, you know, if you don't know about business and you don't know about doing something and running it yourself, you have no idea of the time you have to put in to make to get a product on the table and it's it's the same with with beekeeping you 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 end up putting so much time into it but you do it because you love doing it and that's the key you know um if you're not organized you're not motivated you might just as well go and do something else because you you have to you have to really focus on on getting things organized and for us as well and it's the same for everyone in the Northern Hemisphere. I, I, obviously, I've worked in Hawaii where it goes on all year round, beekeeping. But when you're in the Northern Hemisphere, um, you you have only maybe five months of the year to make all your money. Five months a year to make all your best queens. So you've got to be ready. You've got to be so organized. So um, I'm really, really um, excited about this year. It's it's only early, but everything's recovering well. The pollen side I, I put on seems to be uh starting to really um get those colonies like into into top gear and ramping them up really well so it's it's all looking good so all i'm going to say is use your time wisely over the next few weeks and uh, always think outside the box because thinking outside the box gives you fresh ideas and keeps you motivated i know it's hard i know i'm really fortunate here that i'm able to go in my own garden and get peace of mind get away from my kids who actually are being amazing and they've been incredibly helpful and we're all getting on really well but that's only the first week in a bit <laughs> let's see how that goes after five weeks <laughs> anyway i'm sure i speak for many people and there's a lot of jokes on all the the multimedia uh, platforms at the moment about having to, to spend a lot of time with your family and everything that you'd never normally have to do it's really a bit like christmas really but with better weather in the summer um anyway whatever you're doing uh be careful be safe and uh look forward be positive just lift yourself up just keep going get plenty of rest um because you're going to need it when the beekeeping season really kicks off so uh um speak to you again soon and uh bye for now